What's up people, in this video we are going to be reviewing this right here by Mick the Vegan, How to Prevent Deficiencies on a Vegan Diet. Um, I have watched a couple of this guy's videos. This video I have not seen, but I, I he's, he's very, you can tell he does his research and he's got this kind of like squeaky clean vibe to him where he quotes a lot of studies and he's, I guess, you know, you could call him like a vegan debater, right? which is fine, makes sense, you know, I get it, people want to know the facts behind what they're doing if they're too scared to kind of try it on their own first, or if they just don't know, or if they don't trust their own intuition, but um, I don't think that that is the optimal way to determine what kind of diet you should do or how you should eat. Um, for me, experience is always number one, and that we're going to see is a theme where I personally disagree with Mike or Mick or whatever. Um, because he focuses pretty much exclusively on science so that he can kind of win the debate where if you look at his body type and what he looks like, he doesn't look like the healthiest guy. Now, is that a result of his diet? I don't know. But, um, in my opinion, it's not like, it's, I wouldn't want to take advice from somebody like this just because of how he looks. No offense, Mick, Mike, if you're watching. Yeah. Anyway. I'm Mike, and today, how to cut through the bullcrap diet advice, eat a balanced vegan diet, and escape getting a deficiency. We're going to go through some main nutrients one by one and just see how much of a concern they are and how much you need to eat to get enough. A lot of people are starting a vegan diet with the new year, and to be honest, follow the wrong person's advice, and you know, you can gain 40 pounds and get a B12 deficiency. Just eat 5,000 calories a day. Doesn't matter if you're 5'2 and sedentary. Oh, this is at two times speed, by the way, because it's a 15 minute video. Don't be skinny. Nope, none of that here. But listen to a little bit of science, learn three or four important things, and you may be able to achieve your weight goals, your blood work goals, fitness goals, and maybe even reverse a disease. Not to mention helping your animal friends. Quick point I am not a dietitian, which is why I will be reiterating the recommendations of dietitians and quoting the nutritional research, which as usual will be linked below in the description. I think it's really important to first note that with every diet comes its own set of due diligence that must be done. If you're eating an omnivorous diet, it's a great idea to dodge tuna because of the heavy metals and other contaminants and to watch your cholesterol intake. Like the shenanigans that can go wrong when you eat raw meat is so dangerous. So it's not unreasonable. Uh, I don't know. I can't say anything about raw meat, but like this is a, a few examples already of how I think it's incorrect to only trust the science and not trust um, your own experience. My experience, I feel much better when I eat raw meat and I don't care. You can show me a hundred studies that tell me it's bad for me, but if I feel good when I eat it, you know, and I perform better athletically, then I'm going to keep doing it. Right. So it all just depends on what, how you want to proceed, right? You can do something, you follow the rules, but if the rules make you feel worse then just doing what, you know, doing something else then you have to question if, is that really is that really a, a rule worth following reasonable to expect that there are some things that you should be aware of when you're on a vegan diet. This is not exposing the inherent flaws of a vegan diet. It just means that it's a different diet, a fact that is highlighted by the nutrients that vegans get more of. As this study mentions, there's vitamin A, vitamin C, B6, B9. So like you can tell he doesn't want to he's like I don't want to say in denial but he's kind of in denial about veganism being deficient right so he's got like well actually we get these other nutrients that are even better or we get more of them. Calcium, magnesium, manganese, copper, and iron. And just in case you're still concerned about whether or not you can get all the nutrients you need on a vegan diet, here is a statement from the largest group of nutritionists in the world. Once again, reiterating in 2016 that a properly planned vegan diet is nutritionally adequate for all stages of life. And they went even further this time, saying that plant-based diets are more environmentally sustainable, use fewer natural resources, and do less environmental damage. Okay, I'll get to the nutrients. Let's start with the most common concern: protein. After a lifetime of being told that protein is super important, people tend to get triggered when I say that protein is really not a concern here. But please let this sink in. Vegans, on average, have higher blood protein levels than omnivores. What does that do to your paradigm? And furthermore, that protein deficiency is only really possible with starvation or on extremely restricted vegan diets. This is why it's a good idea to go to chronometer.com and just track what you eat for a couple days to get intuition. And this is just a problem of anybody switching a diet. Not getting enough calories is actually a complaint of people that go on the paleo diet. This is largely for eating a completely different way than you have your entire life, and in the case of a vegan diet, because plant foods have less calories per bite. So unless you decide you don't want to eat any nuts and any seeds or any legumes and maybe just eat oranges or something, if you eat enough calories, you will get enough protein. Now for the second biggest one, B12. Despite there being many vegans out there like Fully Rock saying that you do not need this. Okay, so one thing that I want to point out as we go through the video is that on the one hand, I really like this guy because he's very, um, seems like he's very well put together, but his whole, all of the arguments from this and also a couple other health and fitness, well, really just anybody who's like mainstream in the health and fitness like community, all they do is quote studies, right? He's like, he's trying to win the debate. He's basically like a vegan debater, right? So he's providing essentially information for people that they can then use in their debates with their friends or their family instead of actually providing advice on how to increase your athletic performance, right? If we look at this guy right here, I mean, he doesn't look unhealthy per se. Um, maybe his skin like could be a little bit better. He could get some more sun, but yeah, he doesn't look that bad. Like he looks okay. He seems like he's clear headed, um, a little skinny. Like I don't, you know, doesn't do any videos with his shirt off. So I don't know what he looks like under his shirt. 
but he doesn't look like an athlete, right? And if you are trying to be athletic, I would say take advice from somebody who looks like an athlete mm -hmm. as opposed to, um, you know, some skinny guy like this who's really just kind of providing information for people to use in their debates with their friends or family to justify a choice that may or may not be healthy. The supplement, the consensus of plant-based doctors is that you either need to take a supplement or eat four to five foods with B12 every day. It's misleading because your body can recirculate B12 for many years potentially, but this is just the best insurance policy. So a few months down the line where you're like, I don't really need to keep taking this. You pick that B12 right back up and you take it. And I just have a clarifying point. In my previous video, I mentioned that nori sheets like those used in sushi do have enough bioavailable B12 in the form of cyanomethyl and hydroxylcobalamin to meet your B12 requirements and have been shown to raise the blood level of B12 in rats. Still take a supplement. Next up, DHA. If you want your brain to still kick ass when you're 90, then you gotta get your DHA on lock. Down, lock down, lock down. DHA is a long chain omega 3 fatty acid that your body can convert from ALA, which is a plant based source, or you can get DHA from fish who get it from algae. Your body can only convert a limited amount of ALA to DHA, so you need to make sure you're getting enough ALA from plant sources or take an algae based DHA supplement two to three times a week, as many plant based doctors suggest. Let's say you don't want a supplement. Let's take a look and see how much ALA from plants you need to eat to make enough DHA. Okay, so you need about 300 milligrams per day. And I can tell you right now, most people are not eating fish every day on omnivore diet, so they are missing that mark. Conversion rates from ALA vary. On the very low end, it's 2%. The average seems to be about 3.8%. That's an often quoted number. But on the high end, young women have been recorded to convert 9% of ALA to DHA. So what I would like to see in his videos is anecdotal experience. Him saying, you know, you can quote this stuff, that's fine. I get it. Like, people want to know the science behind it. Some people do. But what I would prefer you know even me just like watching this i would consider doing a vegan diet if i could actually hear somebody's experience who's an athlete and have them tell me yeah i ate this much ala i had this much i don't know whatever you know um and he said i feel better when i have this much i feel worse when i have this you know like give me like a little bit give me something else to go off of instead of just these numbers these numbers aren't going to make me feel good when i'm doing burpees you know there is good reason to believe that your conversion rate goes up when you don't eat fish, as this study shows we can't really put a clear reliable number on it, so we're just going to ignore that. One serving or three tablespoons of chia seeds, which would ideally be crushed for absorption, comes out to 5,400 milligrams of ALA. If you're really bad at converting, that's a little over 100 milligrams of DHA that comes out. Average conversion would be about 200 milligrams, and a young woman might convert up to 480 milligrams. So if your average, like, one and a half servings of chia would cover you, I just so happen to have one and a half servings of chia right here. Notice anything at first? It's not a dead fish. And this is really, it's really like a smaller serving of chia pudding if you add some water, and that stuff's delicious. Ground flax and walnuts are two other good sources, and thankfully, vegan products are starting to add DHA, like Ripple's pea based milk. And now for my next segment, looking through the BS. No, that's not a real segment. No, you cannot get enough to make enough DHA from bananas, you would have to eat 200 bananas in one day. That right there is a challenge for Freely the Banana Girl. She already unsubscribed for me, it's okay, I can say whatever I want. Now to iron. It's ironic that I even put this in here, pun completely intended, because one of my best friends actually cured her lifelong anemia by going vegan, but that's just an anecdote. Anyway, I still want to mention one trick that can ensure that you get as much iron out of your plant-based sources. So, like, I would like to hear more about that anecdote, you know? That's just me. I would like to hear, well, how, how did she do it? You know, that's, to me, that's more valuable than all of these, like, studies. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. This is possible. Many people like to point out that plant-based sources of iron are not as absorbable as animal-based or heme iron, the more bioavailable and possibly carcinogenic iron. But as this study showed, eating vitamin C with your plant source of iron can increase the bioavailability by three times, surpassing the bioavailability of heme iron. So just like how on an omnivorous diet, it's helpful to know that you might want to spray some lemon on your raw shrimp so your friend Salmonella doesn't come to the party. It's also useful to know that you might want to spritz a little bit of lemon on your dark leafy greens to get some extra iron. Now let's look at some foods to get a practical understanding of your iron needs. One cup of black beans is 50% of your daily requirement of iron, and one cup of spinach is 80%. Another less talked about nutrient is zinc phytates, which are very common in plant foods, have been shown to decrease zinc absorption. So on a safe side. It's a good idea to eat a little bit more zinc, as vegan dietitians have recommended. In chronometer, that would mean upping your zinc requirement for men to 16 and for women to 12. In order to do that, just click on zinc, check the use custom values box, and then you can edit the minimum value from there. A bowl of oatmeal in the morning can get you pretty far in your zinc requirement, and a quick zinc hack. You can kind of dodge the phytate issue if you snack on pumpkin seeds, which are relatively low in phytates, and 100 grams of pumpkin seeds is about 80% of the normal recommended daily intake. And just to put this risk into perspective, vegans tend to have pretty normal levels of zinc, as this study shows they're slightly lower than omnivores, but pretty neck and neck with vegetarians. Now, vitamin D. Depending on where you live in the world, this may or may not be an issue. If you get a lot of sun, obviously not, but you can also get all the vitamin D that you need by eating mushrooms that are exposed to so just one quick thing about vitamin D. Um, I read this. Uh, first of all, homie doesn't look like he gets any vitamin D. So again, I'd like to hear an anecdote where he's getting his vitamin D from. But um, I read this book back when I lived in New Zealand that talked about how vitamin D cured like this guy's like all his diseases. Right. And he said he was taking like 50,000 to 100,000 IUs a day. OK, which if you know anything about vitamin D, that is like preposterous amounts. Right. Um, but, you know, I'm an experimental person, so I ordered these vitamin D pills that were 5,000 IUs per pill, okay, which is already a lot. I think the recommended daily is like 1,200 or something, which is, it's, it's low already. Um, but I started taking 25 to 50,000 IUs a day. I was even taking 100,000 at one point, felt absolutely no difference whatsoever, like zero. Okay, I did this for maybe a month because I thought, you know, I read this book and I thought I was going to feel like all this stuff. However... You let me get 15, 20 minutes of sun a day, and oh my god, I feel like a million bucks. Okay, now again, this is anecdotal evidence, but and is it really vitamin D that's you know making me feel good, or is it something else? But anyway, again, it just goes to kind of reiterate how like 
you can quote all these studies all you want. Meanwhile, like you look like you haven't seen the sun <laughs> in years. <laughs> and why am I going to listen to you about vitamin D? Like you, you need vitamin D. Why am I going to take your advice about that? I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. UV light. As this study showed, they are as effective as vitamin D supplements at raising your blood levels of vitamin D. So mushrooms are certainly adequate to prevent and reverse vitamin D deficiencies, and the vitamin D is not destroyed during cooking. And almost as if they were chilling on the beach, these mushrooms caught more tan the longer they sat in the UV light. These are quite widely available at supermarkets, just be sure that they're advertised to have vitamin D. Next up, calcium, which many people will be concerned about when ditching dairy. It's a bit confusing for how much you need. The WHO still says we need 400 to 500 milligrams a day. The US, the highest in the world, says we need 1,000 milligrams a day. And this study of 212 studies showed that we need to be about 540 milligrams to maintain healthy bones. And to be completely in the clear, we should eat about 800 milligrams. So you can pick and choose your nutrition authority, but it's quite amazing how quickly you can get to 800 milligrams off plant sources of calcium. Let's take a look at how you can get there. One serving of sesame seeds, 300 milligrams. A cup of collard greens is another 250 milligrams. That's 550, which will keep you from losing bone mass. But add a serving of tofu for another 250-ish milligrams, and you're at 800 milligrams. And other random foods you eat throughout the day will easily get you to 1,000 if you want to go there. Quick point: the widely accepted recommendation is now to not use calcium supplements because they can spike calcium blood levels and help coagulate and clot your blood. Not fun. This can be taken as a reason to go a little bit lighter on those plant milks like almond milk and soy milk that are fortified because it's essentially a calcium supplement added. That's not a reason to be completely afraid of drinking a little bit though, which brings me to restriction. But now you probably know that I advocate for a whole food vegan diet. But for people just going on a vegan diet, there's a tendency to continue restricting beyond the animal products to an unnecessary level. So I would say if restriction is an issue for you or you're overwhelmed by a vegan diet period, then you should just focus on getting animal products out of your diet and feel free to eat a slightly junkier diet in the beginning. One final nutrient I want to talk about, and that brings me to YouTuber Nick Akato Avocado, who recently had a somewhat dramatic video about how he believes he has deficiency. I still think he needs to get a blood test, but he did mention vitamin K2, which I have yet to cover. Most sources talking about vitamin K2 are low carb blogs, but it is believed to be protective for your heart and bones. And Nick Akato's concern is that he's not getting enough because it's in animal products mainly. But here's the deal. Our bodies make vitamin K2 from vitamin K1 in plants, sort of like- All right, so. I kind of mentioned it earlier, how I think that athletic performance is kind of the barometer of whether or not you're actually a healthy person. And that is because as you scale up your athletic performance, you will notice the, the chinks in the armor, so to speak, in terms of your nutrition, right? For example, if you eat, extreme example, if you eat a bunch of chocolate cake and you go, you know, the next day and you try and whatever, run or play sports or something, you're going to feel much worse than if you had eaten oatmeal, for example, right? And those are two extreme examples, but th it's a continuum, you know? So like when you give all this advice about K2 and calcium and all this stuff, if the person is not um, performing on, if they don't have a high level of athletic performance or they're not pushing themselves physically, then it's kind of hard to tell if they're actually doing anything other than just how they feel, right? By, by pushing yourself with some kind of athletic performance, you're able to kind of determine it's it's just a better test i guess is what i'm saying so you know regardless of all the other advice that he's giving in this video which i guess could be considered good advice to people who actually want to try a vegan diet it's good advice because it's you know about science and stuff like that but like where's the actual testing coming in in terms of is it really going to make them feel better ALA and DHA, and the case for K2 being required in the diet is actually pretty weak. Looking at Chris Kresser's low-carb website, it's clear that the main thing that people are hinging on here is that higher K2 was associated with lower heart disease risk. But in population studies, vegans were shown to die 42% less from cardiovascular disease. No, they weren't dying more of other things. They had 15% less total mortality, and we can observe a 100 times lower incidence of heart attack and stroke in Dr. Esselstyn's long-term clinical trial on a whole food vegan diet. So K2, definitely not a requirement for dodging heart disease, and in terms of bones, vegans were also shown to have equivalent bone density to their omnivore counterparts. But heck, if this whole K2 thing really bothers you, just order some natto online, which is fermented soybeans, which has some of the highest levels of K2 out there. And it's made from bacteria, so it's vegan. If you really want to cover yourself and you are so fortunate, why not get a blood test every so often? YouTuber Tia Blanco, who is not just a professional surfer, but she also eats a whole food vegan diet, just got a blood test after four years of being vegan, and it turned out to be perfect. And now she knows she's not low on anything, and if she was low, she could focus on that nutrient. And that's just a good idea whether you're vegan or not. In conclusion, the three most important things here are eat enough calories, get an adequate source of B12 and DHA, and beyond that, it's a good idea to eat those vitamin D mushrooms in the winter, maybe spritz some lemon on your dark leafy greens, and eat some pumpkin seeds to make sure you get enough zinc, and you should be pretty well off. With those concerns taken care of, you will no longer have to be concerned with eating cholesterol, eating heavy metals in fish, eating hormones in dairy, and you can enjoy lower rates of diabetes, obesity, hypertension, and many more diseases. All while lowering your environment footprint and no longer paying for bad things to happen to those cute little animals that you love win for everybody all right that's it but i also just want to say thank you all so much when i wasn't looking i just flew by 50,000 subscribers overnight this is i honestly never thought this would happen back in the day when i had like five views per video when i started so thank you for watching and feel free to like this video and let me know down below if there are any recommendations that you don't agree with that i made or any nutrient concerns that i just left out and cite your sources all right vitamin c you next time <laughs> all right so you know again i didn't want to pick on the like actual like is veganism good or not? That's not really the point of this video. The point is that when you're trying to determine what you should do, like health-wise, you want to look at the people who do those things and determine if you want to be like them, right? Like just, and again, this is just one guy. We can't use him as like the example for all vegans. But when you see that guys who are vegan, they're thin, you know, they don't look, they don't look that good. You know, you have to kind of pick and choose the examples of people who are vegan to be like, well, this one professional surfer is a vegan and she's fine, you know? Most vegans are not, 
All right, now, is it correlation? Is it causation? I don't know. But at the end of the day, if you don't have any anecdotal evidence beyond a couple like famous professional athletes and every single other vegan that you know is not healthy looking, um, you know, I don't know. Just could use some more anecdotal evidence. Anyway, let me, guy, let me know what you guys think about that video. I'm, I want to review some other videos too. I want to kind of do this for a while instead of like wandering around. So if you guys have any other videos that you want me to review or any other YouTubers you want me to take a look at, let me know. Leave me a comment. Um, yeah. Peace.